The curse sickened him, and he collapsed in the swamp and would have drowned, but Bailiki sent her unicorn steed to save him. And that steed was the goddess Luru. Hawkstone, a ranger's life. In the old gray box, the box set that introduced the realms to the world as a campaign setting, and not just my campaign, referenced in my articles in the pages of Dragon, I provided an array of non-player characters, movers and shakers in the setting. Some were featured in later products, but for others, the box set was their only moment on stage, and many of them have interesting stories both before and after the snapshot provided by those pages in the box set. One of these is the ranger Hawkstone. That's not his real name, by the way. It's just what he went by after he fled an unhappy youth in Tethyr as the youngest third son bullied by a tyrannical noble father. Hawkstone was born Roldrick Dugal, but never used that name after heading east as a 14-year-old stowaway on a caravan bound for Tazir. Hawkstone is interesting because he had a busy life with lots of twists and turns and enough adventuring exploits to spawn scores of tavern tales, which they did. All over the vast and the Dales, Cormir, and Sembia, one can hear old tales of Hawkstone being retold over the later tankards. Roldrick Dugal was discovered by the caravan merchants not far out of Tether, but he paid handsomely for his passage with Dugal coin he'd brought with him in the form of six money belts worn under his clothes. When asked his name, he replied, Hawkstone, just Hawkstone, as he'd hidden in a wagon lying down behind crates, stamped Ember and Hawkstone Fine Ironware. This was a long-vanished Athcatlan firm that made pots, pans, and lids for same. Its partners also had interesting lives, but we'll save them for another time. When the caravan broke up in Tazir, Hawkstone sought backroom work so he'd not be seen by many passing folk and perhaps recognized and hauled home. He found it as a bellows hand at the large local smithy of Vrorendor's Forgeworks where he befriended the night shift smith, Balearn Two Swords, when Eels Vorendror went bankrupt and creditors swooped a year later, Balearn departed to found his own smithy and took Hawkstone with him, where for a decade Hawkstone labored nightly, so at last Balearn could work a day shift and sleep when the sun did, and discovered his natural aptitude for forging, tempering, and finishing blades. By the time night chill fever abruptly carried off Belairn and his wife Nance, Hawkstone was an accomplished swordsmith. He took over the smithy, renamed it the Hearth of the Sword, and made swords, producing only durable long swords and short swords in such bulk that caravan merchants took to stopping by and buying up all of his stock or trading ever better steel bars for it. Hawkstone's fame grew as his blades spread across the heartlands, Cormir and into Sembia. For a time, a Hawkstone blade commanded double the normal price. He loved his work and devoted himself to it, and might have gone on producing swords for the rest of his life had a certain client not stepped onto his forge floor. If you're enjoying this video, please leave me a like or subscribe. If you want to see other videos in the future, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms lore, please jaunt out to my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming a protector of the realms. The tall, quiet, darkly beautiful ranger, Lore Alahand, who'd broken one blade and lost another in a desperate fight against a hobgoblin raiding band and was seeking replacements. Hawkstone was smitten on sight and gifted her with what he considered his best blade. She responded by bringing six friends to the smithy to buy weapons, and when they left, Hawkstone impulsively followed her, letting his forge die untended. It was as well for her that he did, 
as Lorraine was attacked by nine Zentus assassins near her rented lodgings when alone, and they might have overwhelmed her had Hawkstone not burst onto the scene to hew three of them down in a trice. He and Lorraine became friends, and soon more than friends, and when she departed to Zir to return to her beloved forests, Hawkstone went with her, walking away from his smithy and sword-making for the woman he loved. Together, Hawkstone and Lore wandered the dales and the vast, aiding the harpers against brigands, zent and petty ruler aggressions, and hobgoblin and orc raiders for two years before they accepted a mission to escort a young and rebellious Roaring Horn noble from Cormir to his kin in Waterdeep and a new life there. The journey involved wild adventures in Eerie Aber and Scornubel, and when they brought Aragar Roaringhorn safely to the High House of Roaringhorn, the two rangers were promptly contacted by a half-elf who gave his name only as Sulder, an undercover agent of the Lord's Alliance who offered them high pay for certain diplomatic missions up and down the Sword Coast. They accepted though their harper and alliance work soon devolved into an ongoing life of wilderland adventures all over the Sword Coast North that lasted another decade and involved several trips back along the Heartland's trade routes into Cormir, Sembia, the Vast, and the Moon Sea North. In the spring of 1354, DR, they settled into a harper-owned shack atop wooded Deljacks Hill, north of Silvery Moon, so a very pregnant Lore could give birth to their first child, a daughter. But she died in the birthing, and the child came forth dead. Welled with grief, Hawkstone buried them both and headed south alone, wielding the sword he'd gifted to his Lore as he sought evildoers to hew. He fully intended to throw his life away in battle against evil, but staggered away from his third such fray wounded to collapse on his face in a glade deep in the high forest, but crashed down not onto moss, but into an embrace that plunged him into tingling magic. He was in the arms of the goddess Myliki, who healed him and told him not to waste his life out of sorrow for his lost love, nor to return to the forge but to serve her instead, preserving forests from woodcutters and despoiling beasts like dragons and battling evil. Heartened, Hawkstone pledged to her, promising to follow her guidance, and made his way alone across Faroon to the Dragon Reach, keeping to the Backlands, where he wandered grim and melancholy, helping those in need, fighting monsters, and aiding druids, elves, and harpers in maintaining and preserving forests. This soon brought him into conflict with the black dragon Yindoth, who was damming the river Lys to drown great swathes of the surrounding forest and greatly enlarge the flooded forest to make a larger domain. For months, he and the dragon waged war on each other, Hawkstone destroying dams and many servitors of the dragon sent to kill him until he managed to penetrate the worm's lair, take Yindoth by surprise, and slay him. Sorely wounded in the battle, Hawkstone plundered Yindoth's hoard in search of healing and found healing potions, the shield that later became known as Hawkstone's Bulwark, and something that bore a curse. The curse sickened him, and he collapsed in the swamp and would have drowned, but Myliki sent her unicorn steed to save him. And that steed was the goddess Laru. Laru broke the curse and not only saved Hawkstone, she entranced him. Smitten, he followed her, and she guided him out of the swamps, ear vanishing. Heartened anew, Hawkstone became the wandering protector of Moonsea folk, fighting raiding ogres from Thar and giants from the Great Glacier. He acquired the magical blade Durelva from a tomb he took shelter from a blizzard in during the years he roamed and fought, having many adventures and often striding unheralded out of a storm or the night to aid lost travelers or wounded and beset adventurers. Unbeknownst to Hawkstone, the goddess Larue was as interested in him as he was in her, 
And one night when he was weeping for his lost Lore, alone over a campfire, she came to him as the guiding unicorn who'd saved him before, but shifted to human form and comforted him to try and drive away his grief over Lore. They became lovers and thereafter remained fast friends. When Hawkstone was laid low at last, slain by a small army of ogres who trapped him into a last stand and overwhelmed him through sheer numbers, though at a great cost of Tharan lives, a Moonsea Metalbars caravan was guided to his hacked corpse by a shining unicorn that trod air. And under its watchful eye, they laid him to rest right there on what was then a nameless height, but is now Hawkstone's Hill, three heights west of Glister, with his shield and sword. Grave robbers took them both years later, and in doing so freed Hawkstone's ghost to walk as a striding, sad-eyed, silent apparition that can do nothing more than warn of impending attack by its appearances all over the Moon Sea North. So, as many tavern tales remind us, Hawkstone guards against evil still. And that is just a bit of the long tale of Hawkstone. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak. And this time around, we're doing this. Shanti, the goddess of agriculture. Shanti. And Shanti, yes, I created Shanti. And I created Shanti thinking of her as the land. What if the landscape, gently rolling hills, only they're all, you know, cultivated or, and they have fences made of stumps and, and, and stones and then hedgerows um, everywhere. What if, what if that was a motherly figure who would open gigantic eyes and look at you? That was shocking and still is. <laughs> 